We're talking all about the colored pencils today. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Our Set Play, and today we're talking about colored pencils. I get a lot of questions on my channel about where to start with colored pencils, what paper to choose, what pencils to use, and different techniques, of course. So I thought today I would break it down and talk about my favorite paper choices, my favorite pencils, and a few of my favorite techniques to use. So I'm not going to be doing a full piece in this. It's not going to be a tutorial, but hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the tools that are out there, the types of pencils, and the things that you can do with them. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about pencils. I am going to kind of give you an overview of a few of the brands that I currently have in my possession. I've tried other brands, but I didn't find myself reaching for them, so I gave them away and things like that. So these are the brands that I have on hand that I can talk about, and I have them kind of laid out according to price. Other than these, this is kind of an outlier, and I'll explain these in a little bit. But yeah, so let's get down to it. Now, these are all considered artist grade. Some of them obviously are going to be higher end than others. And so I'm going to start with the cheapest pencils first and kind of give you a rundown. Also, I do have the Crayola colored pencils here that I will swatch one of them for you later when I do some swatches of these just to kind of show you a comparison. This is only like five bucks for this 24 set. So they're much cheaper. However, you can't get them open stock and there are no light fast ratings. And just to talk a little bit about light fast ratings, kind of give an overview of that, I will be mentioning light fastness in this video. And light fastness refers to the strength of a pigment when it's exposed to light. So some pigments when exposed to light will fade very quickly and some will fade like or will never fade in like 100 years under the perfect conditions. And so and when something is called light fast, or considered light fast, it means it's not going to fade as easily. If something is called fugitive, that means it's going to fade very quickly. Now, most of these pencils here, or at least these first four brands that I'm going to talk about, these all have a range within their brand. All of them have pencils in their line that are either going to be fugitive all the way up to extremely light fast and so you can find light fast ratings online if you're concerned about your work fading i recommend buying light fast pencils especially if you're going to sell your work and each brand does have light fast pencils in it some are more light fast than others as an overall brand but you can look at the ratings at each of each online and decide for yourself and then these three brands here they are 100 percent light fast their whole line is light fast and so that is something to consider when buying pencils. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So we're going to talk about our first four sets of pencils here. And I've only picked out just like a few colors from each just to kind of give you an idea of what they look like and how pretty they are. Because come on now, colored pencils are beautiful. Okay, so let's talk about this first brand here. The first brand that I want to talk about are the Blick Studio colored pencils. Now this is going to be the most budget-friendly brand in this list that I am showing you. Now I want to make mention of the Koinor Polycolor colored pencils because these are pretty much the same exact pencils as the Blick pencils. And they both are made with California cedar casings. They come from the Czech Republic. I'm pretty sure they come out of the same exact factory. And after using them, like, they pretty much feel exactly the same. So I actually store these in the same drawer together because I use them interchangeably. And I have to say that I currently am having a harder time finding these in the U.S., the Polycolor, finding them open stock in the U.S. Now, I shop from Blick and Jerry's Artarama the most, so any pricing that I'm speaking about will be Blick prices. It will be U.S. dollars. There are other great art supply companies out there, such as Jackson's Art Supply and things like that, that are in other parts of the world, such as the U.K., that may offer these things, but I'm going to be referring to Blick a lot because that's where I shop for the most part. And I'm not able to find these open stock at Jerry's or Blick at this time. However, 
I usually see these in places like Michael's. And I have seen them offered open stock in Michael's, but I don't remember the pricing structure right now. So Michael's usually has them open stock or they have in the past. That's where I've gotten them. However, if you happen to get a set of these from some random shop somewhere and you want to refill your color, but you don't know where to go to find open stock, you can just go to Blick and get the Blick Studio. I swear they're pretty much interchangeable. So let's talk a little bit about the pricing of the Blick Studio. The Blick Studio sets are the set of 22 i mean the set of 72 on blick for the blick studio is 58.99 now they do have sets of the polycolor on there and the set of the polycolor in the 72 is 62.34 so the blick is actually cheaper in the set so that's something to note as well and they're only currently $1.22 per pencil. That's not bad. Now, compared to $5 for a whole set, okay, you know, that's not the best either. But for something that has light fast ratings on it, it's not that bad. And now I wanted to read to you their description. They formulated this pencil in a way that was made for artists. That's what they're touting on the website. These pre-sharpened colored pencils were specifically developed utilizing feedback from Colored Pencil Society of America, artist members, and teacher. The result is a professional quality colored pencil at an affordable price that has been manufactured to our exacting standards. Use Blick Studio Artist Colored Pencils for the fine art applications or wherever you need some color. Now, it doesn't really mention on the Blick listing if these are oil-based or wax-based. However... The polycolors claim to be oil-based. To me, they feel more waxy, but I'm going to go with these are an oil-based pencil because that's what the polycolor claims, and I swear they're the same exact pencil. <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about oil-based and wax-based. All colored pencils are a mixture of oil-based or wax-based. Some lean or advertise themselves as one way or the other, so some lean more towards the wax base and some have more oil in them, and so that's how they advertise themselves. Generally speaking, a wax-based pencil is going to lay down very quickly, it's going to be softer, it may break a little bit more easily, and it will blend beautifully. Whereas an oil-based pencil, you're going to be able to get your fine details. They'll sharpen to a really fine point and keep their point more easily without breaking as much, without having as much waste. And they're not going to blend as easily. They're going to be a little bit more transparent. So think of lots of layers with these. Now, you can use these pencils interchangeably. I've used all these pencils together. They work fine interchangeably. I tend to like to layer my oil-based pencils first because I can get into the tooth of the paper more easily with these fine tips and then come over for any of the real blending with my more wax based pencils and then if I need to come back on top for fine detail I can come back in again with my oil base but everybody has a different routine okay so with that out of the way let's move on to our wax based pencil of the hour and that would be the Prismacolor Premier and I apologize, there's a helicopter flying over, and I'm sure you hear that. Okay, so here we are at the Prismacolor Premiere. If you've started with colored pencil, chances are you've heard of this. This is like, I mean, I remember when I first started with colored pencil, this was the colored pencil on the market. Now there's all kinds of options, as you can tell, but many people start with Prismacolor Premiere. Now these are a wax-based pencil, which means they are going to have a softer core. Now even within the wax-based pencil realm, some are softer than others. This is probably the softest on the market. There has been some quality control issues with Prismacolor in the past where people experienced an exponential amount of breaking while sharpening and while using these pencils. I have heard from others that it seems to have been resolved, but I haven't had to buy new pencils in a very long time, obviously, because I have plenty. But um, that is just something that I need to mention. Now, I started with Prismacolor Premier. These are the pencils that made me fall in love with colored pencil, and I will always have a special place in my heart for them because I still find myself reaching for them, even with all these other beautiful options. And so I don't want to put them down for sure, but 
I just wanted to put that out there because I'd hate for you to go spend money on them and then have issues with them breaking. Now, one tip that I have is they do have an open, let me see if there's something you can see a little better. They have an open barrel so you can see the end. See how that's just slightly off center if you look at yeah, at your core. So that means that this could break more easily than others. So I recommend buy them open stock from a store, which you can find these pretty much anywhere. And look at the end so that you can see if they are centered. Now let's learn a little bit more about these. I'm going to look at the Blick website again. Let's look at their pricing structure here for their 72 set. It's $61.20. So Definitely a little more expensive than these. Still not as bad as what we're going to be talking about for future pencils price-wise. And they are $1.36 per pencil. So still really reasonable. So I recommend if you can't afford a set, figure out what colors you know you're going to use the most and just buy some open stock to try them out. That way there, if you don't like them, you're only out a few dollars as opposed to... And I recommend that on any of these brands mentioned, as opposed to buying a huge set and being like, well, this isn't, you know, this isn't really what I wanted. So definitely try either a smaller set or getting like just a few to start off with. Now, I'm going by the 72 set because I believe each of these besides this set has a 72 set in them. But some of these have a higher range of colors than others. I know that a few of these go up to 100. These go up to 100 and the Holbein go up to 150. These only go up to a 24 set. I believe the Polychromos are 120. And then the Blick, you can get, I think, just up to a 72 set. So there's definitely a, a wide like range there. So you can get more bang for your buck or I should say you can get huger sets in some of these than others. That being said, you really don't need to have that many colors. But anyway, so these are definitely cheaper and on the cheaper end and definitely in between this and this as far as pricing goes. And they say they feature a thick soft core made from brilliant light resistant pigments. Now, there are light fast ratings on all of these and I can say that there are some fugitive colors in Prismacolor, although it's not as bad as what people say online. You'll hear people say that Prismacolor is not light fast. That's not true. Some are light fast, some are not. And like I said, I have a video on light fastness on my channel, um, but I can say it's not as bad as the reputation says. All of these are going to claim that they're light resistant. Only a few of the, the sets are 100% light resistant. Okay, moving on to the polychromos. So let's look at this. This is our oil-based pencil of the hour. So this is the one a lot, a lot of people in the colored pencil community uses. And I feel like I did the same natural progression as other people. I started with the Prismacolors, then I discovered the polychromos. And so for, oh, they don't have a set of 72. You're going to see a price jump here for sure. They have a set of, a gift set of 68 and that's $188.98. So that's less than, but it's a gift set. So it's kind of, their set of 60 is $88. And so it's a little bit different. I thought they had a set of 72. So I apologize for that. Per pencil, open stock, $2.60. So that's definitely a price jump from the first two. However, these are an extraordinarily versatile pencil and you're going to get professional quality with these. These also have a range of light fastness. They're a little bit more light fast than some mentioned, but yeah. So these ones, as I mentioned before, they are oil-based. You're going to have that sharp point. You're going to be able to get your details with them. However, lots of layers. They're going to be a little bit more transparent. I forgot to even bring the white down to compare. Their white is trash. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry, I can't say it any other way. Unless you use it on sanded paper, for some reason, it's extraordinarily surprising on sanded paper. Their white is the most transparent white out of any of the white pencils here. And so I don't recommend their white at all, but the rest of their pencils are beautiful. All right. Moving on to the whole bind. Now, these have actually come down in price. These recently just started being sold in the U.S. regularly and on Blick. And so let's take a peek at that. So for 
they don't have a set of 72 either. I don't know what I was thinking, folks. This is another price jump, though. They have a set of 50 for $142.28. So we're getting up there in price. Their set of 100 is $283.84. Um, and these are $3.20 per pencil, which I feel has come down since when I first bought them, which is nice. Usually when something is new to a website, it's going to be a little bit pricier. Eventually the price will come down and be more competitive. So as I mentioned before, these are kind of a, these are a mix between wax, oil, which all of these pencils are, and fats. They're the only ones that I think advertise themselves that way, which I find to be really, really interesting. And they do feel different than some of the other pencils out there. They're definitely very, very soft to lay down, but they don't break as easily as like Prismacolor. So they feel very much, if you've been around for a while, which this is mainly for beginning, beginners, so you probably haven't, but Barrel Prismacolor. I've tried some Barrel Prismacolor, which is what Prismacolor used to be way back in the day. And these feel similar to that. And very, very beautiful lay down. Very quick to work with. Quicker than other colored pencils on the market, which for me is a plus side. So very interesting. Again, these also have light fast ratings. They have them right on the side. They have a range that goes from, you know, they have some fugitive colors in their line to extremely light fast colors. So there we go. Now we're getting into the big guns. We're pulling the big guns. Actually, this is part of the big guns too, because these are pretty pricey. Karen Dosh Luminance. This, to my knowledge, was the first ever 100% light fast colored pencil line on the market these are very very beautiful pencils and i believe that these are a waxed base pencil that's how i've heard them touted strong coverage and mixing capacity allow for intense application blending burnishing while extreme softness enables subtle blending and gradations cases are made from environmentally friendly california cedar wow i mean these companies really like the california cedar <sighs> These are just beautiful pencils. They are definitely softer than what you're going to get with like the polychromos and stuff. They don't crumble as easily as the Prismacolor. These are like the creme de la creme. Like it's a it's an upgrade from Prismacolor basically. These are what you're going to want for your soft colored pencil once you get really really serious about things. However, I don't know that they're necessarily softer than Prismacolor. I have yet to find a pencil that is softer than Prismacolor in my eyes. But these are definitely beautiful. A lot of professional artists swear by them. They are a go-to in the colored pencil world. And every single pencil you get in the line is going to be light fast. That brings us to, oh, did I share the prices on that? Let me share the prices on that one. They have a 76 set for $219.37 currently on Blick. Each pencil is $4.53. So again, this is another case where if you really are aching to try it out, you may want to go per pencil first in case you're not a huge fan of them. Now, I love these pencils, but I don't find myself reaching for them as often as the next pencils. And that is the Derwent Light Fast pencils. Now, these are supposed to be an oil-based pencil, and you do get a nice point. I mean, they are Derwent, so they're they're going to have the thicker core, thicker barrel, but you can keep a fine point for a while. They don't break as easily because they are oil-based. However, they feel very much like a wax-based pencil to me. So, but they are beautiful. And they have some colors that you can't necessarily find in other lines. Just gorgeous, all-around gorgeous pencils. I go to this pencil quite often now. And every single, again, every single pencil in this line is light fast. And so this is actually the most expensive colored pencil that I am talking about today. Now, you do not need to get these pencils in order to be a colored pencil artist. There's a reason why I'm showing you a range here. And I will be showing you different pieces that I've done in each so that you can kind of get an idea of what's possible with each brand. So... These pencils are $4.79 a piece for their set of 72, $206.93. These are the premier of Derwent colored pencils. And Derwent has a ton of colored pencils. I didn't include all the other Derwent colored pencils that I have 
in this because these are really my go-to out of the Derwent pencils. Those and the Derwent drawing. Now I included these because these are a pencil of a different color. These are more muted tones and I believe that they actually have a different kind of core. They have like a nice creamy consistency and oh, they're just beautiful for blending, but they only have 24 colors in the line. But I have to tell you my favorite black pencil and my favorite white pencil out of any of these are these two, which is why they're so short because I use these with my other pencils all the time all the time and these ones are not as pricey they just feel differently though they are like they feel like clay they're not they're so soft and blendable but they don't feel quite as waxy and they definitely don't feel very oily they're just a beautiful pencil and these ones are not very expensive they're a dollar 89 per pencil they only go up to a set of 24 and that is 45 dollars and 41 cents Okay, so now I am going to take, I think I'm going to do the black pencil out of each so that I can kind of show you a swatch and how they kind of look on the paper. So I'm using the Fluid 100 watercolor paper here. It's a hot press watercolor paper for my swatches. I'll talk about paper more later on. I'm going to speed these swatches up because this video is already outrageously long, but I start off by swatching the black and then I come through with like a cyan color and purple to do some blending. And I have reviewed the Blick pencils before, but it was on my blog. So here is a piece that I did using just 100% the Blick. So you can see what we can really do with them. I'm starting with the light layers, but later I will come over and do some more layers when I compare them to the Crayola. As you can see, I compared the Blick and the Koei Noor Polycolor Black Pencils right next to each other. They are very, very similar, feel very similar. And they are a little bit harder than a lot of wax-based pencils. And so they do feel more of the oil base, more transparent, and... I am just keeping the layers light as I said. Something that is important to note is that when doing swatches you want to keep a sharp point on your pencil. Actually when doing any type of work and you can see at first I didn't have a very sharp point then I came back with a sharper point and you can really see the difference here in the color payout and I will come in in real time and talk to you about the sharpener that I use so that could be some useful information for you. But I'm just going back and forth with these colors to layer them on top of each other to see how well they blend without using any sort of blending agent. And I will bring in some blending tools later on to show you the different kind of tools you can use to blend. So now I am moving on to the Prismacolor pencils. And you can see here I got a nice sharp point on that pencil as well. The Derwent Super Point Manual Sharpener. I love this thing for colored pencil. And I haven't even had like problems with this breaking too much in the machine. So that is what I recommend for sharpening. You can use handheld sharpeners. You just got to be careful with how you're doing it. Everybody has their own preference, but I 100% recommend this. And I will link things in the description below. Moving on to the blending of the Prismacolor, beautiful chef's kiss. I love how these colors lay down, so vibrant, so beautiful. Here's a piece that I did a long time ago using 100% Prismacolor. Great pencil to learn with. Definitely very vibrant, soft, and easy to blend, as you can tell here. Now, moving on to the Polychromos, the oil-based pencil of the hour. <laughs> As you can see already, they are a bit more transparent than the other colored pencils laid down. They require a lot more layers. The Prismacolor Black only needed a couple layers to get as dark. Polychromos, definitely not as dark as fast. Here is a piece that I used 100% Polychromos with, and... Definitely can you can definitely do a lot with a polychromos. It just takes a lot more layers as you can see here And once you layer them there is enough vibrance So at this point I'm starting with the luminance and then I realized they accidentally grabbed a brown instead of a black But it was kind of serendipitous because this brown is the pencil that gives me issues in this line This is something that I want to mention It's crummy 
the the brown has like this scratchy crumbly feeling and it leaves little spots that can't be blended out and i don't know what it is it's pretty much just that pencil and i think i've heard other people have issues with it as well or at least it's that pencil that i've noticed out of the ones i have but as you can see in the blending very opaque very thick lay down beautiful colors soft buttery Sadly, I don't think I have an example of work where I use 100% luminance. I don't know that I ever have. I'm going to have to change that. Now on to the light fast. That black, beautiful, beautiful. And the blending, gorgeous. Wonderful for an oil-based pencil. They definitely feel more on the wax side the way they blend. And they're just such a gorgeous color payout. Okay, on to the Holbein. Dark black, beautiful layout. The color payout is so quick and so immediate and definitely feels similar to Prismacolor, but not exactly the same. And here's a piece that I did with those. Now onto the Derwent drawing. Look how dark that black is. I put a few white streaks over it to show you the white. And then we've got these beautiful muted earth tones. Okay, so I did run and grab my black luminance. Another very beautiful black. Not nearly any of that scratchiness that I had with the brown. And it stays deep for a while, so it's definitely a beautiful pencil. So what does that mean for the amount of money? Well, first of all, I can say the three pencils that I reach for the most are the Light Fast, the polychromos and the drawing because I use drawing like the black and the white with everything and I'm definitely starting to lean more towards Holbein those are newer to me than the other pencils so you know given that I haven't done a ton of colored pencil drawings since I've owned them um and then there are still times when I reach for my Prismacolor. I can say, honestly, I don't reach for the Blick as much and I don't reach for the Luminance as much now the Luminance when I first got them they were an investment for me. This was before I was using colored pencils as much and I was a little afraid of using them. And so I think part of it is that I just haven't gotten into the habit of them. But also this brown, I like to do a lot of landscapes and stuff. I use browns and earth tones a lot and that kind of turned me away from it. However, they are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pencils. But now that the Derwent Lightfast are around, because my main draw to these was the fact that they are Lightfast, I use the Derwent Lightfast a lot. However, these are very, very expensive pencils. The Polychromos I use in almost everything as well, because like I said, I like to use light layers, as you can see here. Like, it, it layers kind of lightly. I like to use light layers underneath with my polychromos to get into the groove of the paper for a nice smooth application. I don't reach for the Blick and the Co E Noir as much, obviously. Um, although you can do beautiful work with them and it doesn't take much to layer more on them. You can get better saturation. But this brings me to another point. Keep your pencil sharp, like I said before, but also Look how much more luminant that is, or much more saturated that is with just another layer. Always use more layers. So these pencils are actually pretty good for their money. Now let's take a look at the classic Crayola, because I haven't swatched that yet. Just to kind of give you an idea of why sometimes it can be good to go for an artist pencil. But again, Use what you have. Now, the black, not too shabby. Actually, <laughs> kind of right up there with the polychromo so far. And I'm working on a fairly smooth paper, so that's going to determine things as well a little bit. Can you get blending done with them? Yes, you can. But, if you watch me layer this back and forth, back and forth, it really doesn't get much more saturated than it did initially. You see what I mean? And then pushing down, you finally get that saturation. It just doesn't have the oomph 
Look at this, and you can especially see it in the dark colors. Look at this purple. It doesn't have the oomph. <laughs> it doesn't have the pizzazz that the other colors pencils have. But you can blend with them. So if this is all you have the money for, absolutely do it. Um, the difference, the main difference is going to be if you want to sell your work. See, I'll put another layer on the Blick again. And see how much darker that actually will get. If I actually burnish this down. And the reason why I'm doing it this way with the Blick, because this is the next pencil up from, as far as the pencils that I'm showing off. This is the next pencil up from the Crayola. So if I burnish, you can see it does get pretty saturated and a lot darker. So if all you have to work with, if that's all you have to start out with is Crayola, do what you can with what you have. I just wanted you to be aware that they're not going to be a saturated long haul. And then if you do decide you want to sell your work, there's no light fast ratings on them. So we don't know if it's going to fade over time. So if you do get to the point where you want to start selling your work, I would definitely upgrade at least to the Blick but I would even jump to the Prismacolor because, like I said, you can buy them open stock, buy the pencils you're going to use the most, check them out for any issues on the end. And a lot of these have that open end, so you can check. It's not going to focus on that. But So, yeah. So, as a professional artist, I usually stay within the Polychromos, Lightfast, Holbein, and Drawing. That's what I like the most, but again, these are perfectly suitable. And the Prismacolor Premier, you can get beautiful professional results with those as well. Again, I haven't bought new pencils in a while, so I don't know what their quality control is like, but I just wanted to give you an idea of what each of these pencils look like, what they can do. I personally like the colors that can blend really easily. I love that. And the polychromos I use as a foundation and then to come back in with some fine detail after. But you can do a whole piece with 100% polychromos and get some pretty saturated effects through layering. And the same with the Koei Noir and Blick. It just might take a little bit longer. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you, I swatched off camera the white pencils. Derwent Drawing has it. <laughs> the Luminance is pretty good too. It's a pretty bright white. The Prismacolor Premier, gorgeous. Blick, absolutely useless. Polychromos, not great. Holbein, pretty darn good. Lightfast, pretty good. I'd say the Drawing Holbein and Prismacolor have it as far as the white goes. But the drawing, my all-time favorite. That will run over anything. It just bombs anything. And the other thing that I wanted to show you to get really bright whites is the Brush and Pencil Touch-Up Texture Titanium White Mixture. Now, you get this little nail polish bottle. You get this beautiful powder, which you can use this powder just as a powder on your work to lighten some things up. Now, originally, this was made to be used with the colored pencil blending powder. And it should be used like on sanded paper and things like that. But when you mix it with this, it will go over. And you basically are making a paint made out of colored pencil. This is ground colored pencil from my understanding. This helps put tooth back on the paper but if you mix it together it clings really well this is the only archival way to paint on top of your colored pencils to get highlights to my knowledge things like gel pen will chip off over time posca pens any type of water-based paint marker could chip off over time because they are not made to go over wax water and wax don't mix water and oil don't mix Oil and wax repel water. So just think of it that way. If you're using a water-based product on top of an oil or wax-based product, you are bound to have some archival issues down the line. These products are made for colored pencil. So you basically, I just put a little powder in here. You can see where I've mixed some before. 
and then I pour a little bit of this in there. I mix it together and I paint it on just like paint to get my highest highlights. And so definitely an awesome, awesome, awesome tool to have in your colored pencil toolbox. Okay. So I want to talk about some other techniques to get white highlights while we've got stuff going on here. This is a slice pen tool. It's a ceramic blade, so you don't cut yourself. You can use an X-Acto knife, but I don't, need, I don't need any dangers. And you can very lightly scrape things away to get some highlights. This is great for whiskers and things like that. You want to do it gently. Just kind of pick at it so you're not damaging your paper. You can also erase. My favorite erasers to use are the Tombow Mono Eraser to get detail. And then the Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser, which is in pencil form. It comes with a little thing so you can sweep away your shavings. You can see that I used it recently. And you can sharpen it just like a pencil to get a fine point. This is like an ink eraser. This is their white one. They have a pink eraser as well. It's softer. It um, doesn't do the trick for me as well. I, I don't mind that for other applications, but for colored pencil, I like this, the one that has the white tip on it. It sounds a little rough on the paper, but it really, it does the job and it doesn't damage things. So that's a way that you can get highlights as well. One other way that you can get highlights with colored pencil that I like to use for fine detail. I like to use a wooden stylus pen. This is something like you'll see people use it for nail art or for sculpting and things like that. And I like to do imprints on the paper. So you just kind of push the lines into the paper. and they stay there. So that's also one of my favorite things to use. I have a video on my channel that I will link that is my top favorite tools that I like to use with colored pencil. This is mentioned in there and there's a few other techniques if you'd like to see that as well. So while I have things out, let's talk about blending. Now you can blend and burnish with your colored pencils themselves and burnishing, as I said, is when you're kind of pushing the pigment really hard into the tooth of the paper. Now, this is something that you don't want to do too soon because that's going to be harder to correct than something that's this light of a layer. So it's really best to work in light layers and eventually you will fill that tooth of the paper and it will kind of burnish itself. However, that does take a while. Colored pencil takes time. And that is one of the main things you have to keep in mind. You need to take your time with colored pencil. Otherwise, if you rush it, there are some mistakes that are harder to correct. But burnishing is best left for the last layers when everything is in place and you know you're not going to want to move things around. A lot of people like to use their white pencil to burnish. I remember when I first started with Prismacolor. That was one of the things that I did. And if you remember right, Prismacolor has got a pretty good white on it. If you push really hard, then you're able to burnish and it blends all those colors below. However, now you've lightened your layers. They make blending pencils. And a blending pencil is basically just a colored pencil that has the wax core in it or wax oil based core without the color. And that makes it so that you can blend the layers below. Now, this will still, because it's kind of waxy, maybe leave a lighter film on your colored pencil. However, not as light as if you're blending with your white. So I recommend if you'd rather use a pencil to do it, each of these brands probably has one. I know Prismacolor has one. I think the Prismacolor is my favorite, but obviously the Koh Noor has one. I, I believe, I think Luminance might have one. A lot of these brands have the blending pencil. Something else that some brands make, and I don't have one on hand anymore because I, I don't use them, is blending markers. Prismacolor makes a blending marker. Essentially, it's one of their alcohol markers, but without the color, you can use it to blend their alcohol markers with. But they also work to blend colored pencil. And I used to use those a lot in the beginning, but they, like, I ended up switching to odorless mineral spirits instead because 
I found that to be more convenient for me. Now, odorless mineral spirits, you can get, it's basically odorless turpentine or similar to. Now, just because it's odorless does not mean it's not poisonous. So that's something to keep in mind. There are still poisonous fumes that come off of the odorless mineral spirits. I use the Gamsol. It's supposed to be less toxic than other options out there as far as odorless mineral spirits go. However, it is still toxic to breathe in. And so I don't like to keep open containers of it in my studio. Instead, I put it in a water brush. This is something that people can use for um, watercolor usually. They fill this barrel with water and then they can use the brush. Now, don't judge me. Look how janky that brush is because I've been using this for years. You just have to be careful. I like to use a pipette to fill it. So I like use the pipette, I pull it out of my bottle and then I pour it, like squirt it in there because the stuff does leak really easily. So you have to be careful. But however, once it's in the brush and the brush is screwed on tight, I mean, I've had this in there for months. It hasn't evaporated. It hasn't leaked out all over everything. And the only reason why it's so low is because I've used it. But I use that when I want to blend and this is how odorless mineral spirits blends and you need to have a lot of layers down before you do odorless mineral spirits but look at this. It blends everything together nice and smooth. Beautiful. It will stain the paper if you don't have enough layers it can kind of make your layers stay where they're at instead. And then that kind of makes it harder for you to correct mistakes. So this is another area where you want to take your time. You want to have enough layers on the paper before you blend because then those marks will kind of stay where they are. It kind of has the opposite effect and it can make it more difficult to cover. However, that being said... With odorless mineral spirits, it kind of revitalizes your paper again. If you've had, if you do have a lot of layers down, once you blend it out, it kind of gives you more room to play on top of again and gives you that tooth back. Now, because this is poisonous, there are non-toxic alternatives available. <clears throat> One of them is the whole vine melts. I love this stuff. This is actually a water-based colored pencil blending medium. I know it's, it's which I, I don't know. It's like, it's magic. It's sorcery. It's witchcraft. I don't know how they do it, but I'm glad they do. I usually, I will eventually put this in a brush. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. And you can use a brush or a cotton bud or Q-tip to blend things out. I just kind of put it in this little thing that I have here. I'm not as worried about having this as an open container because it doesn't have any warnings about vapors or anything like that. And it blends really beautifully. And something that's really awesome about this, because it's water-based, it almost turns your colored pencils into watercolor. And this is something that I've discovered that is a little different than the OMS. See how when I kind of brushed my brush off over here, it stained the paper and that stain kind of stays there a little while longer. Even where I had blended out where there's not enough layers, it kind of leaves a stain. I don't have that issue with the, the whole bind melts. I love this stuff. I can't rave about it enough. And I mean, it's not, the blend isn't necessarily as seamless, but the fact that I can do other things with it. And I will do a video down the line where I do this technique. I just scratched some purple out of my luminance. I'm just kind of interchanging colors now. Pick it up off another surface and then kind of paint it on. I don't know. It's just very exciting. And I will do a video on that technique very soon. But I wanted you to see that. So those are some of the blending techniques. There are other things on the market such as zest it colored pencil blender i haven't tried that it's not as readily available in the u.s as it is in other places i will link other options in the description below but those are some of your blending options okay so let's talk a little bit about paper options you saw me using the fluid 100 watercolor paper and this is a little bit this is going to be more on the pricey side than some of the other options i will mention however it's a kind of nearing the side of being too smooth but it is it's smooth enough to get the fine details but it still takes a lot of layers which is why I like it and another paper that I use quite often for that same reason is the Arches Hot Press watercolor paper now 
See, obviously I used up the whole thing. This is all I have left of that paper. I love working with colored pencils on this, on these two types of paper. Hot press watercolor paper works really well to get the layers that you need for colored pencil. However, it is pricey and it's not the only paper I use and I really just started recently using it. But you can, it's, it's solid enough. It's really, really nice paper. And so this is kind of more on the higher end of things. However, there are some other options out there. This is the Canton Me Tints. Let me see if I can zoom out a little so you can actually see this stuff. The Canton Me Tints paper. I love this paper for colored pencil. Now, it is not as thick. It's only 98 pounds, whereas your Arches Hot Press is going to be, I use the, I think this is the 140 pound paper. Um, so it's not as thick, but boy, does it take a beating. It's made for pastel. However, and it is tinted, which has some plus sides. You saw the kind of cool effect that I showed with my, with the white swatches on black. Working on tinted paper can be a great way to set the tone and the mood for your piece. So if it's something that you want to feel more nostalgic, like nostalgic and like memory-like, maybe a nice warm color would be a great backdrop for it. If you're, you want something a little sullen and like a little bit quieter, you have your grays, you have your blues, like a cloudy day or something like that. There's so many options with it. And it, even though it is not very thick, it takes odorless mineral spirits and other blending agents beautifully. It has the rough side, which most people use for pastel. For colored pencil, use the smooth side because you don't want to be fighting the tooth of the paper. But this has like this nice felt texture there's just there is enough tooth to take the layers that you need without things kind of just sliding off and being too slick to get the detail I absolutely 100% recommend this paper I've been using this I mean for years and it's still one of my go-to papers I wish they would make it a little bit thicker but other than that I have no complaints Another paper that is popular amongst colored pencil artists is the Stonehenge paper. I enjoy this paper quite a bit. They have some other colors in it as well. This one is the white pad. It is 100% cotton. It is 90 pounds, so it's just a little bit heavier. I mean, a little bit lighter, sorry, than the Me Tints. But it is a beautiful paper and takes the layers that you need. The only thing, I wasn't a huge fan of it with the way it absorbed OMS, and I don't know if it, it's, I don't know what that was about. I haven't tried it with the melts yet, but it's definitely a beautiful paper. There's many, many artists who rave about it. There are some other alternatives to regular paper. Sanded paper is a great alternative to just using regular paper. This is the Lux Archival sanded art paper, and it is a little bit more expensive. Now, for something like this, I recommend using the colored pencil blender, and that's like a whole other that's a whole other technique than the techniques I'm talking about in this video. It's it requires other tools. Remember, I had mentioned the the colored pencil titanium white and this touch up texture. Um, they also have a thing, it comes in the same kind of container as this, but it's a colored pencil blending agent and it's just a powder and you put it on and it helps you blend out your colored pencils in a different way. And so, but these products all work best on sanded paper and a nice tough substrate that's not going to bend or anything like that. And so they also came out with their own paper. Now, I have not used this for colored pencil yet. I've only used it for oil pastel. I love it for oil pastel. It is amazing. But my friend Nick Edgar, he does some beautiful work using all of their products. And I'll link his channel in the description below. He does some gorgeous work on this paper. He's the one that introduced me to this paper. Um, I just haven't tried it for colored pencils yet, but I've heard people rave about it. It is a pricier paper, though. So just be aware of that. Something else that's similar, but completely different. <laughs> Same thing, only different. Something else is the Claire Fontaine pastel mat. Now I don't have any of this readily available right now because it's kind of packed away in my studio at the moment. Um, a lot of colored pencil users 
swear by that paper. It's a nice, strong paper. Again, it's a little bit on the pricier side, but you can layer to the ends of the earth. And it has just a slight kind of grit to it that is unique to any other surface out there. It's not quite a sandpaper, not quite a gesso. It's its its own thing. And I've only, again, ever used that for pastel. I'll show a piece that I did here with pastels, but other people swear by it for colored pencil as well. So that is another option, albeit a pricier option. Something else that I like to use that's not just paper related is pastel board. Again, this is a surface that is made for pastels, but this is the ampersand pastel board. I love this surface for colored pencils. One of my favorite pieces I've ever done was done on this surface. And I used pastels in the background of it, but the bumblebee and the lilacs were all done mainly in colored pencil. So I kind of did a base of pastels and colored pencil over it, but you can use just colored pencil on it. It's a whole different thing. It's a different kind of texture. It's just a unique thing to try. Another option that is an alternative option that I've seen other artists work on that I have bought some of and haven't tried yet is acetate, which is a clear plasticky, people use it like it's a, like has a frosted side on it. I don't really know how to explain it, but it's like a plastic kind of substrate that people draw on. And so it's see-through, but you can get infinite layers and you can layer differently and a lot of people do beautiful work that way too. Now let's talk about a few things that I don't recommend for paper because paper is really important. So the th main thing is is you want something that has enough tooth that you can get the layers you need but not something that's going to be so rough that you're going to fight the tooth of the paper. So something that I do not recommend doing is working on cold pressed watercolor paper because you're just fighting the tooth of the paper. At that point, you're kind of looking at the Crayola crayon look, and it just takes a lot longer to get the saturation that you want with colored pencil. And colored pencil is already a slow medium, so why make it harder on ourselves, right? Like, what are we doing here? We don't, we're not about that life. So I don't recommend using cold press watercolor. On the same grain, I don't recommend using anything that's too smooth either. So we have some regular printer paper here. It doesn't take long to fill the tooth of that paper and burnish that pencil in there. And so it makes it much harder to get the layers you want. And then even so, like once you have all those layers down, it just doesn't look as saturated and as beautiful. Even if you decide you're just going to burnish it, it's not nearly as saturated and as beautiful as it would be if you were using all the layers to try and get that effect. And then kind of in the same grain, here's just some regular cardstock. This is even worse than that paper, than regular paper. Now this is thin, flimsy printer paper. This is cardstock, which is thicker, but look at this. I'm already not able to fill any more tooth and it's not saturated enough. It's just not. You're not going to get those dark darks or the beautiful saturation that you're looking for. So you don't want anything too smooth. And in that grain, I don't even really like to use bristle paper. This mixed media paper, the 400 series mixed media paper, is my all-time favorite paper for many, many things. I like it for ink tents. I like it for other things. I don't like it for just plain colored pencil because it starts to get on the side of a little bit smoother than what I would like. Now, it's better than than just regular cardstock, but it's like it's got its own slight texture. I don't know. I've done a piece on it in the past and I just while I was able to complete the piece, it just didn't give me the layers I wanted, but that could be my own personal way of working. Otherwise, I love this paper a lot for other things. Like this is one of my favorite pencil, I mean, one of my favorite papers in general, just not for colored pencil. I love it for graphite. And then I'm not a huge fan of bristle board for the same reason. But that is my own working properties. Like that's just how the way I work. It might be different for you. I know other people who swear by using bristle board for colored pencil. I prefer to use that for things like pen and ink. And you know, like if I'm doing 
stippling and things like that. Okay, so I hope that you learned something about why I make the choices I make for my colored pencil work and what I use as a professional artist who works in colored pencil. Again, for beginners, I definitely recommend buy the best that you can afford as far as pencils go, even if you have to just do a few in open stock. We have some really high quality pencils here that aren't as expensive as they could be. Like if you're getting in these three, these first three, I started out with Prismacolor and Polychromos and those were the two pencils I used for years and years and years until the Light Fast came out. And then I, I use a lot of the Light Fast now. And so you can get some beautiful, beautiful work with less expensive tools. And there are some other pencils out there that I haven't tried that are a little bit cheaper. And there's a few like Arteza. Arteza makes some pretty good pencils, not a bad price point. I just never found myself reaching for them. And so I gave them to my sister. So there's other options out there on the market, but this is what I have to go on. And so definitely try to get the best that you can afford. If you have to start with Crayola or even Blick, that's fine. But just keep in mind the type of paper you're using will also affect it. If you're going to use something like this on a really smooth paper, then you're going to have struggles. You know what I mean? You're just not going to get the saturation that you want. Um, so combination of pencil and paper definitely matter. And then I just wanted to touch base on a couple of other tips when it comes to colored pencil. Very, very basics. You want, in order to get smooth strokes, you want to use small circular motions. You, I see a lot of people going at it like this and then they're wondering why they can't get a smooth blend. But if you keep a really, really sharp point and just use small circular motions to get in the tooth of that paper and then they're all automatically blending with each other so you're not over here basically fighting yourself and fighting your own strokes. So that is the biggest tip I have. Sharp points, small, minuscule circular motions like this, not like scribbles, right close together, tight knit circular motions to fill the tooth of the paper and to get a nice smooth blend. Okay, so that is what I have for you today. That was really, really long, but I hope that you learned something. And this is just my experience. Other artists may have different tips for you. We all work a little bit differently. And so I can only go off my own experience, but I hope that this helps you get started and helps you kind of make decisions when it comes to purchasing pencils and paper and things like that. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Bye.